You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News on today's programme. A crisis of fire and ice. We look at how heat waves in the northern hemisphere have led to unprecedented blazes in Siberia. How passive cooling instead of energy intensive aircon could help keep homes cool as global warming ticks up. And meet the unexpected sharp toothed climate superheroes. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those coming up with the solutions. Yakutia is one of the biggest and coldest regions in Russia's Siberia, but it's on fire. Unprecedented blazes have ripped through more than one and a half million hectares of land, releasing choking smog and fumes as the region experiences what officials say is the driest summer weather in 150 years. And it's not the only place affected by extreme temperatures and unusual weather. Over recent weeks, large parts of the Northern Hemisphere have experienced extreme heat and severe weather events. A heat wave in Russia last month led to Moscow recording its hottest ever June day, nearly 35 degrees. And a few days later, the North American heat wave meant a record high in Canada, with Lytton in British Columbia reaching 49.6 degrees Celsius. Now, the heat in the Northern Hemisphere led to forest fires breaking out in Siberia and the Pacific Northwest of the United States. And deep in the Siberian Arctic, the temperatures led to unprecedented ice melt in the Laptev Sea. It can be seen clearly in these satellite images. Here's the level of ice three years ago. And here's what it looks like this month. And the consequences of this extreme heat have been picked up by satellites tracking changes in the atmosphere. Smoke particles, or biomass aerosols, have been circulating the northern hemisphere. This is the path of emissions from the Siberian and North American forest fires, pluming high into the upper atmosphere and merging to form a streak covering 6,000 miles around the Earth. And the record summer temperatures are continuing in Siberia. Here you can see the heat this week, with temperatures well into the 20s as wildfires continue to rip through forests. Our correspondent Diana Magne has been out with firefighters near the city of Yakutsk in the Russian Arctic. Russia's forests are burning. One and a half million hectares in the worst hit region of Yakutia after another exceptionally hot and dry summer. We're out with Pavel Petrov, who's coordinating the response around Yakutia's badly hit Gorny district. We're looking for the fires speeding along freshly dug trenches, which are meant to keep them at bay. Where there's smoke, there's fire. The forest's smouldering a little further along the trenches. Most wildfires start from a lightning strike during a dry thunderstorm. But these fires are set by the firefighters to clear through the dead wood and undergrowth so that when the real big wildfire comes, it's got nothing to burn on. It's literally fighting fire with fire. Andrei Pichtin, who's been sent in to help from the west of Siberia, shows us proudly what his men were dealing with the day before. Each fire needs its own individual strategy, and with so many burning across Siberia, it's only those the firefighters can even reach that they tackle. That means that many burn unchecked, emitting huge amounts of carbon into the atmosphere as they do. And they're burning on permafrost, which as it thaws emits greenhouse gases too. It's been a long, hard month for Pavel Petrov. Petrov. 
Siberians have always had to deal with the most extreme temperatures on Earth. Now, as these wildfires increase in intensity, they are also bearing the brunt of our changing climate. Dynamagne Sky News in Gorny, Siberia. And you can read more about the extreme heat in the Northern Hemisphere and the wildfires in Siberia. Just head to skynews.com forward slash climate. And multiple wildfires are still burning in parts of west coast of the United States. A huge blaze from California has spread to the state of Nevada, forcing several communities to be told to leave their homes. Meanwhile, the country's largest wildfire is in Oregon, and it's now grown to more than 618 square miles in size. That's just over half the size of the state of Rhode Island. In today's other climate news, a climate calculator has been created to let people decide which policies should be used to reduce carbon emissions. The tool by think tank Demos lets users see how decisions such as flying less and eating vegan would help the UK meet its target to reduce emissions by 2030. It gives a breakdown of costs and shows people the effect each policy would have on their lifestyle. A two-day meeting of G20 environment ministers is taking place in Italy. President of COP26, Alok Sharma, is among those attending. And topics for discussion will include how to increase climate finance pledges and reduce carbon emissions. The G20 is formed of 20 of the world's richest economies. And communities in Tanzania are using a tree monitoring app to help restore forests. The charity, called Trillion Trees, is working with local people to plant 900,000 trees with the aim of creating sustainable supplies of timber and fuel while protecting biodiversity. To make sure these planting efforts are successful, the app is used to register and to check the health of the new saplings. Parts of the UK have been experiencing extreme heat this week. And according to the Met Office, these temperatures could become the norm by 2050. While air conditioning may seem the obvious answer, it will only make global warming worse in the long term. That's because AC units alone were responsible for a billion tonnes of CO2 emissions in 2019. But passive cooling could be the answer, a cheaper and more climate-friendly solution using low or no energy consumption. The chimney effect is one example. It uses cool air, which enters from lower ventilation like windows, to absorb the heat. This hot air then rises and escapes through openings higher up. Building materials such as brick or stone have a high thermal mass, meaning they absorb heat and radiate it back out. But shading prevents this from happening. And homes in hot countries often use white paint on walls and roofs. Scientists recently created the whitest ever paint, which they say reflects 98% of sunlight, as well as radiating infrared heat into space, reducing the need for air conditioning. Well, let's bring in Elisabetta Cuarta Colosso, an architect in Barcelona who specialises in energy efficiency in her designs. Elisabetta, a very warm welcome uh, to you. What features specifically do you include in your designs to help with this passive cooling? Uh, so, first of all, is uh, to know the condition of, of the place and to respond it with uh, uh, design tools. And these design tools are, um, for example, the, the openings of the building, um, the uh, quantity of insulation you use, uh, the kind of materials, uh, the, the same design, the volumetry of the, of the building, uh, out, um, how it responds to the to the natural elements that you have in the place. Now, many homes in the UK, for instance, simply weren't built for the heat. Is there anything that can be done for existing homes to retrofit them to help with this cooling? If we are talking about um, uh, restoration of old buildings or existing buildings, uh, first of all is insulation, of course, that is very important to regulate the inter internal climate of the, of the building. Uh, the second one, of course, uh, it depends to, uh, on the characteristic of the building you, you have, but one is the solar protection that you can apply on almost all the facades and openings. And uh, uh, then um, 
cross ventilation that is very important, like cross natural ventilation. That, of, but of course, in this case, uh, it depends on the distribution that you you have. Not not always you can you can do this. Uh, you can apply this point. And what countries are best at? building these homes that are that are designed to stay cool? Who should we be looking to as an example? Uh, the example comes from the traditional, the good traditional architecture. Like, for example, the solar chimney we use, it comes from the Arab architecture because they, of course, uh, during, uh, during time, they, they had very, very warm summers and so they used these uh, this device to cool uh, different floors of the building using a black solar chimney uh, to take out the the warm uh, air from from the inside for example that's very interesting indeed elisabetta quarta colossa thank you very much indeed for your expertise today thank you and finally, they're Hollywood's favourite go-to villain, but sharks are actually climate superheroes. They can teach us about how the seas are changing and help maintain the natural balance of our ocean's ecosystems. Here's your 60-second guide to how Jaws helps the planet. Well, that's everything from us for today. Tomorrow, it's 100 days to go until the biggest climate summit in years, COP26. And we'll be looking ahead to the meeting, why it matters and what might be decided. You can see that here tomorrow on Sky News. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.